All right, Cubs, happy Friday. I'm going to go through today's work with you so you understand what to do. So on day five, it says phonics and vocabulary, and it says you need a paper and pencil. Um, our directions are to make a list of words using the prefixes re and un. Oh, I know you guys can do this. As because we've studied so many prefixes. Um, try to come up with at least three words for each prefix and then write a story using the words you came up with. You got to make sure that your, your story has a beginning, a middle, and end in lots of details. All right, so the first thing you need to do is to remind yourself what does re mean? Well, re means, I hope you're saying it with me, again. That's right, again. Doesn't mean to do again, that would be what redo is. Re just means again. And what does un mean? Well, as we know, un means not or the opposite of. All right, so what you're gonna do is you are going to think of three words that have re. Well, I don't wanna give them to you. And three words that have un. And then you're gonna take those words um, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to say redo. No, I do not want you to use redo. All right? And um, I'm going to say unfunny. Oops, I put unhappy, but I meant unfunny. It's unfunny. Um, so as a reminder, uh, to have the word, to have the word, to have the prefix re, um, the rest of the word has to be a real word, like re-do. Well, if I cover up the re-do is a real word. If I cover up the un, funny is a real word. All right? If you, do, if you can't cover it up, the re-up and make a new word, then it's not um, a re-prefix. For example, the word read, read means to read. If I cover up re, it just says add. But that's not a word. It is a word, but it's a shortcut word for itself. But that doesn't, it doesn't mean to add again. That's not what re, read means, right? So that word is not a word with re as a prefix. Hopefully that makes sense. Like, for example, um, the word understand. Well, if I cover up the un in it, it says derstand. Derstand is not a word. So this is not a word with prefixes. So be careful. Make sure whatever word, the root word is what we call it, remember, that goes behind your prefix is an actual word. Okay? So you're going to take these words and then you're going to start writing a story. Uh, one Friday, Jack was trying to do a somersault. I wonder if that is a somersault. Anyway, um, so I'm starting my story. I'm going to make sure it's a beginning, a middle, an end, and lots of details. And I'm going to make sure to use my words. So, for example, each time... Oh, maybe I'm going to say redid. I wonder if redid is a word. Each time he redid the same steps and got the same terrible result. So I would keep writing, but see, I'm gonna actually underline where I had my, where I use my prefix word. So Miss Canterbury result, so I could see it, all right? All right, that's the first one. The second one for our second grade math friends, it says, be an engineer. Now, this is still for second grade math, because my friends in advanced math have their own thing, have their own work to do. So, it says be an engineer. Think of a problem in your house, okay? This could be anything. 
Use the engineering design process to solve the problem. Ask, imagine, create, improve. So to remember, remind yourself, we go through these steps, right? First of all, we ask ourselves, what's the problem? And Miss Candleberry, she can always give you the same exact problem. The squirrels won't stop eating my bird seed. Ugh, squirrels. I sound like old man food choir. That's my problem. My imagine. So now imagine is where I think of my ideas. I write down my ideas and I think of them, right? My plan is where I choose one of those ideas and decide, hey, this is what I'm going to do. My create is where I put my plan into action, right? I say, here's my plan, and now I'm going to put it into action. And my improve is where I make it better, which means if it didn't work, I choose another idea. I go through my planning stage. I go through my create stage, and then I go through my improve stage. Improve is just make it better. And I'll prove could also be remember to get feedback. So, hey mom, do you think that this worked? If you didn't think this worked, what do I need to improve about it? Do you think? And then use your feedback your parent gave you to help you improve. And you kind of keep going through the process until you get a solution, an answer, right? That works for your problem. For example, Miss Candleberry, how do I stop the squirrels from eating my bird seed? I've been trying to solve this problem for years. Well, I had a lot of ideas. One, I had this cayenne pepper that I would put on over, all over the bird seeds. That didn't seem to work. Then I had an idea that I would um, squirt them with this cayenne pepper water, and that worked for a little while, but then they still kept coming back. Then I decided, well, I was going to just feed them, but even though I fed them, they still wanted the bird seed. So I've been going around in this circle for a long time. Now, you don't have to go around this circle for a long time, but what I do want you to do is take photos of your work, basically take photos of your, uh, your ask and imagine, take a photo of your plan, your create, and your improve step, all right? And then you're going to upload your work to Class Dojo Portfolio. Remember, you can upload more than one picture to the same thing. You just take a picture and click on the, the same um, day's work. All right? So that is our STEM work. Not necessarily math, but our STEM work for second grade math students. And my friends who are in advanced math, you still have something to do. So you don't do that one today. Um, next week, we have one that you will do from the regular math sheet. All right, here it is. Today, it's the fifth day, day five, which is create your store budget. I had some of you guys who wanted to do this. So you're going to look at this information that you wrote, your instructions, where it tells you the total of how many things are on their shelves. Remember, Miss Kennedy to change this because I forgot to make a, a commutative property shelf, so I changed this one to be the commutative property shelf with this one. So... Um, I had to change my budget a little from when you saw it. So instead of 20, and then you, I'm sorry, to go back, and then you need to know the price that you had on your shelf. So whatever the price you had on your shelves, that's the price that I should see here. For example, on my example shelf, my, my magic shelf, at the top I had $8, right? I had magic at $8. So over here, now I've got, I've made this um, f table. Now you do not have to have a table like mine. It's just easy, it was easy for me. So I wrote the toy down here, then I wrote the price, and then I showed my math work. Um, don't make your table before you do your math work. Do you know what I mean? Like you can make one, you can start making a table and then show your math work and then make the line afterwards because you might need a lot of space to show your work. Now, for all of mine, I used the distributive property because I had some high numbers. And for what we've done, the distributive property or maybe the area model property are the easiest things to do. So I'm going to show you again what the distributive property is. It's written right here. But I had 21 times 8. And I want you to use a pencil and not a pen. Um, so remember, distribute means to give out, right? So I'm going to take 21, and I know 21 is like 10 plus 10 plus 1. And so now I'm going to distribute this 8 
that times eight to all of those those numbers. So it's see like ten times eight plus because there's my plus ten times eight plus one times eight. And so then I would say, oh well, that's eighty, and that's eighty, and that's eight. So eighty plus eighty is one hundred sixty, and then plus eight would be one hundred sixty-eight. My total money I would make from magic hits would be one hundred sixty-eight dollars. So I put it there. If you were using, if you were using the area property, um, you would. I'm going to do this one on a post-it. Remember, you would do it like this. You would say, okay, well, here is 8, and I'm going to break up my 20, 1, I might say, into 20 into 1, right? Because 21 is like 20 plus 1. That's when we break it up into our, sorry, we break it up into um, expanded form, right? And then you'd say 8 times 20. Some of you can do that in your head. And then 8 times 1. If you can't do it that way, you always can break it up and show your area model more like the distributive property where you say, eh, well, um, I know 21 is 10 plus 10 plus 1, and you could do it this way too, 80, 80, 1, and, I mean 8, excuse me, and then you add them together, right? 80 plus 80 plus 8 equals 168. All right? So that's the kind of work I want to see here. Some of mine got really high. So I will, I will say that after you show your work, you can go back because we're just learning and check it with a calculator. Have your parent check it with a calculator. The one thing you don't need to check with a calculator is the one that's the zero property. Please don't check that with a calculator. You know, if I have 12 groups of nothing, I still have nothing. I mean, that's just true. All right, and then from there... You can challenge yourself by showing your work and adding all of the money that you would make together. And I used expanded form and I showed all my work and here's my plus eight where I made my change. And then I found out I would need $3,609. And then you can check your work, mine was right, with a calculator. All right, if you have any questions, just add them to the comments.